In this section, we're going to be looking at developing or creating confidence intervals. And they're going to look like this. I'm going to take a sample mean and subtract off some number e and I'm going to take a sample mean and add some number E. E will be known as our error. If you're following along in the book, they use, for the letter E, they use E, B, M, but I'm just going to use E. What this does is you're going to have an interval, not including the ends, I'll draw a real number line. The mean will be the center of that interval, and the endpoints will be the mean minus the error, and the other one will be the mean plus the error. So our goal is to create this thing, and it's going to be based on how much error we're going to permit. So let's start off with an easy example. All right, so we've collected some data and we've taken a sample. We know the sample mean, but we do not know the mean for the entire population. So we know the sample mean, which is here. That's always something you can get. And the sample mean will be used as a basis for us trying to estimate the mean itself. The error bound is this guy right here that goes by the letter E. So our confidence interval then is x bar minus e, x bar plus e, which will be 7 minus 2.5, 2, 7 plus 2.5. So we have 4.5 to 9.5. That's our confidence interval. Here's a quick extra one. Uh, the sample mean is 15, so that's our x bar, and the error is 3.2. So our confidence interval is x bar minus e, x bar plus e, x bar was 15, e was 3.2, and then 15 plus 3.2. So I get 11.8 to 18.2. Now let's see how this relates to what we're actually doing in this class. Construct a 90% confidence interval about zero I'll say mu equals zero in the standard normal distribution So what we do, let me get the graph of the standard normal distribution. There's the standard one, mean zero, standard deviation one. I want a 90% 90 per, 90 confidence interval. What that means is I want to find me some scores here. Let's call this C. Now what's going to happen here is, since it's about zero, I know one is going to be the negative of the other. What we have here is 90% of the data will be between negative Z and Z. That means the other 10% is evenly split up 
among these end pieces. So there's 5% there, and there's 5% there. Now, it's going to be easy. Once you find Z, whatever this number is, you'll immediately know what this one is. So we have to first find this, and we do that from the table. Here's the relevant section of the table that I wanted. And it looks like my 5% is 0 0.05. So here's 0 0.0505, and here's 0 0.04947. It's attached to the negative 1.6 row, if I can ever get over there. And it's connected to both 4 and 5. What I do is I take the midpoint of those two, and I'll do 0 0.045. So this z value is negative 1.645. Immediately, this one is 1.645. And so what I have is 90% of the data is captured between these two z values. So my confidence interval then here would equal negative 1.645 to 1.645. Similar problem. This time let's construct a 95% confidence interval about the mean zero. So now the picture is a little bit different. Here the middle part will be 95%. So I'll have as before, I'll have a negative z. And I will then have a positive z. At least it should have been there. And then in here I'll have 95% of the information or the data. That means out here I have to split those two up evenly into the 5% that's remaining. So 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So here we have 2.5%. And here we have 2.5%. So I'll go and try to determine from the table what this value is over on the left, and that'll immediately give me the one on the right. Once again, I brought up the relevant part of the table. I'm looking for 0 0.025 in this table, and a very unusual thing has occurred here. It's actually listed there, so I don't have to go between two values or anything. This is one of these really, really, really strange and wonderful values that are available without doing any kind of interpolation. So we have our confidence interval then is going to be from negative 1.96 to 1.96. Notice, to be confident, we need more data. So you can see this confidence interval is bigger than that one. For sample means, of sample size n, we have the mean, the sample of the sample means, was equal to mu sub x, nothing changed there. But when you did sigma of that, you got sigma sub x divided by the square root of n. So we'll make use of these, because what we're going to try to ultimately do is determine the size of n to achieve a certain kind of error that we want. All right, our first example here is we have a normally distributed situation 
We don't know the population mean, so this would be that mu would be unknown to us. That's what we're going to try to estimate. Uh, population standard deviation we do know, which that is unusual. Uh, many times you don't have that information. But they give us q sub x is equal to 6. And then we have a random sample of 28 pizza delivery drivers. That'll be our letter N. And the sample mean of 36 minutes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we what we're trying to figure out. I mean, a picture. Let me get a picture of the situation. I think here. Our situation here, we have our sample mean was 36. So we're going to put it at the, the center of our interval that we're going to try to find. Now let me go to the left and to the right. So I'm going to try to find, these would be the ends of the interval. So this would be like the first x1, x2, and these are actually means. Remember that's what we're working with here. Now, they said a 90% confidence interval, so they're talking about this region in here is 90%. As before, then, that leaves us with 5% out here and 5% out here. So make yourself a normal curve, standard normal curve. And then we have a negative Z. And then we have a positive Z. Here's our 90%, and here's our 5% here, and the 5% here. We found these Z's in the previous problem. It was the first one I did of these kind here. In fact, I just passed it. It doesn't want to come down. Negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. <clears throat> Now you'll have to go back and uncover these values. So we have, let me go and do the negative version. Z equals negative 1.645. Now the formula for Z with sample means looks like this. Let me go ahead and put my numbers in. I have x bar minus 36 divided by sigma sub x. Did I calculate that yet? Well, there's the formula for it right here. Sigma sub x equals sigma sub x divided by the square root of n. Uh, that would be 6 minutes divided by the square root of 28. This is what I get to 5 decimal places. At this stage, I'm getting ready to solve the equation. So I'll write it over 1 so I could make use of cross multiplication. And I should be careful here. I'm dealing with the negative. That's x1. So I'm going to put a little 1 down here so I don't lose track of which one is which when I'm by the time I'm done here. So we'll have negative 1.645 times 1.13389. All right, so that takes care of the negative version. Now here's the nice thing. For the positive version over here, we have positive 1.645. You don't need to redo any of these computations. You can go right down to here, and we'll have x bar 2 minus 36 will equal the positive 1.86525. And then in each of these, you'll simply add 36 to get your final answer. 
This one here I can do without the aid of a calculator. And then this one right here, I will use a calculator. So my confidence interval then will be 30. Oh, I put a one, that's a four. 34.13475 up to 37.86525. This was a 90% confidence interval. What that means is this interval that we've constructed, we are 90% positive that the population mean is in that interval. This problem here, instead of telling us about the sample and the sample mean, they just let out give us the sample and expect us to do the mean. We do know the standard deviation, though, of the population, but we will not know the mean of the population. That's what we're trying to estimate. So the first thing you want to do is let's get this data somewhere and organize it and get a mean on it. All right, so in an effort to not bother with handling data myself, I'm going to try to get it into Desmos without doing much work. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to simply copy it like this. In fact, I'm not even going to bother with Desmos. I'm going to, because you can't, you can't put something like that into Desmos. Now you can simply do and calculate the mean of all these numbers and you'll get exactly what I'm doing. But I am showing you something that you may find desirable to do. Let me pull up Excel which is the one that we're using here. This is very interesting what it lets you do. So I can just paste it, right? And you can see, I'm going to make the I've got the data in here. I don't really care about the, the numbers or I mean the, the words or anything. So what I'm gonna do is copy this. This column is really all that I wanted. Copy it. I'm gonna put it at the end of the other one. So I'm gonna put it over here. Now all you want to do, this is column D. Column D starts at number one and it ends at 20. So what a command you can type to find the mean of this is equals A-V-E-R-A-G-E -E, and type D1, that's the top of the list, full colon, D20, that's the bottom of the list, and it's highlighted when you do that, and just hit enter, and there's your number, 0 0.94005. So we've got that. Now let's see what it's going to ask us to do. We want a 93% confidence interval about the mean. So the mean, this is what we're going to use for the center. I'll draw the picture over here right underneath of it. And we're going to look for something here, we'll call it x1 bar. Now these are always symmetric about the mean. And then we'll have an x2 bar. And inside of here is 93%. That means I've got to split 7% up into those outer regions. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5%. So immediately go to your standard normal uh, graph, put a zero here, 
negative z, positive z, 3.5%, and we'll go to the table. Here's the relevant part of the table. I'm looking for 0 0.035. And while I don't have it exactly, it is trapped between two values in this table. Negative 1.8 rho, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. So I usually go 0 .1, 0 0.015. So I cut those in half. And so this one over here is negative 1.0. 815 that makes this positive 1.815 and now once you have these you're ready to go and get these things so remember the z scores look like this the positive one i really won't do any work on i'll just be able to get its answer fairly quickly once i do this negative one so recall the formula for these. So we're trying to figure out, in fact, in this case, it was x1 because we're dealing with the left one. Mu sub x, where'd you go, mu? 0 0.9402. And where was my sigma for this? Sigma was 0 0.337. Actually, I better be careful here. That is sigma. That's not what I want, though. I need sigma sub x. Let's put it over here, then. This is going to equal sigma, or sigma x, whichever one you want to call it divided by the square root of m. So let's see what the sigma of the population was. That was 0 0.337. And then the square root m for this was a total of 20, 20 cell phones. Let me kind of carton this off to the side. So that's to five decimal places. And at this point, I do negative 1.815 over 1 to help myself remember that it's cross multiplication time. And once you got that number locked in, you can come down here and get uh, x2 bar minus 0 0.94005 equals the positive version of that. And of course, add 0 0.94005 to each side. And so I got the endpoints for my confidence interval, 0 0.80327 to 1.07683. We are 93% confident that the population mean is in between these two values. All right, this next problem revisits one we already did, except 
we are changing a couple things and the sample size is 20. You've got to be careful here as the sample size gets smaller than 30. Uh, you lose the normality that we're getting in the population itself. But the mean itself will start to approach normality, but we do want n to be around 30. So let's find out what we have here. The population standard deviation, we can call this sigma sub x, and the sample mean delivery time is 36 minutes, so that is x with a bar. A sample size is 20. There is our n, and we want a 95% confidence interval. Now, I put the old information in. Here, here's the previous one. It's actually, I don't think I need anything here. They changed the N on us. So I'm just going to delete that. I don't even need that anymore. And let's go and get the things that we need. When you do mu sub X here, we don't know that. We will use X bar in its place. Sigma sub X bar equals sigma sub x divided by the square root of n. So that's 6 divided by the square root of 20. So I'll use these numbers throughout the problem then. So we're constructing a 95% confidence interval about the mean of 36. What does that mean? We're going to have the lower estimate, and let's call this one the upper estimate of the mean. That'll be number two. Since we want 95% in here, you only have 5% to divide among these things. So 2.5% goes into each of those. And now let me go to the standard normal curve. The way this is going to look is very similar. You'll be about zero. You have a negative z. And you'll have a positive z. In between these z values, you'll have 95% of the data. We have found this z before. It happened to be a very nice one. The only really nice one on the page it was plus and minus 1.96. At this stage, I'll replace Z with its values. Or actually, the letters first. I'll do that first so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Now we'll go ahead and put our mu mu sub x, we're going to put in a 36 in there. And to this thing we had, where was that? 1.34164. And at this stage you're going to want to put that over 1. Cross multiply. I've lost my subscripts. And at this stage, we'll have the Z equal one positive 1 1.96 come to the party. This one on the right happens to be one I can do in my head, so I'll just do it. And then this one, I'll use my calculator for it. And so our confidence interval will be a low of 33.37039. And it'll go up to 38.62961. And as I said before, 
we are in this case 95% confident that the population mean is in that interval. All right, this is a popular example that we have. Uh, pizza delivery again, we still have X bar is 36. And the population standard deviation is six minutes. That's correct to write that. And so is that, just so you know. Assume that the sample size is changed to 50. So there's going to be N. And we want a 90% confidence interval. So what's going to change here is since we're using a larger sample size, the numbers will come out different. So this is the same as before. We have a 36 here. We have x1 bar here. And x2 bar here. 90% is inside of here, so that must leave 5% for each of these. It's another one we did earlier. This one didn't come out great, but when we go to this, what we found earlier was that this side was negative 1.645, and this one was positive 1.645. So I'll work the two Z values. Z equals negative 1.645 and then z equals positive 1.645. Let me replace z with the formula. The mu sub x here, we're going to put a 36 in there. And the sigma x bar, here we have 50 instead of, so let me get sigma of x bar is sigma of x divided by the square root of n. So we're going to have 6 divided by the square root of 50. Let me get that number. There's what my calculator gives me, 0.84853. And this is when I insert the one underneath of the other side. Cross multiply. So we get that. It's at this stage, the other one comes down and joins. And now I add 36 to both sides. Uh, the right side is always going to be the easier one for me at least. And the left side, I'll have to use the calculator. So our new confidence interval here equals 34.60417 to 37.39583. At put, changing the M changed this answer. Let's take a look at what the confidence interval was for the earlier example. Not the previous one, but there was one before it. That was 95%. Let's go. I want the same stuff except just the sample size changed. That was a problem that we did in between. And I think we're here. Here's what it was. This rate, I can see 1.645. So it goes a little over 34 to a little under 38. So a little over 34 to a, oh, you know what? Instead of grab, instead of trying to memorize it, let me grab it and bring it down and compare it directly. Hmm. 
what it did here is you can see that this interval is smaller than the previous one. That means we got a better estimate with larger sample size, and that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out in case you look at this later, that will be in the way. But increasing the sample size will make the confidence interval smaller. Here's an interesting problem. They've given you an interval. They've given you the endpoints of an interval, right? And here is 42.12 and 47.88. Remember, this one over here is x bar minus the error, and this is x bar plus the error. So a quick way to solve something like this is to set up both equations on top of each other. You may or may not have done these before, but if you add these two equations together, here's what you get. The E and negative E cancel out. These two I have to add together. It looks like that adds up to 90. And then if I want to get X bar, I'll divide by 2. So there's the mean, the sample mean it was one of the questions they have. How do you get E? Well, you can take either one of these equations. Now that I know, let's do uh, X bar plus E equals 47.88. And now that I know what X bar is, subtract 45 from both sides and you get an error of 2.88. In the previous problems we solved something like this. and you got some sort of a Z value over here. Now you don't have to pay attention a lot to this, but I just want to show the motivation where it comes from. You might not remember this, but the distance from here to here is negative E. Similarly, we had another equation over here, x bar minus mu sub x bar was equal to z times sigma x bar. Let me change these, the smaller one and the larger one. Here then we have e equals z times sigma x bar. So this is a formula for the error. We're going to use that in the next example. So write this down. You want the positive Z value. That's why this is the one you want, because error is never negative. And then the sigma of X bar. Let's go and find that next example. The population standard deviation for the height of high school basketball players is three inches. So what they've given you here, this is sigma sub x. If we want to be 95% confident that the sample mean height is within one inch of the true population, they're telling you is that the error is equal to one inch. How many randomly selected students must be surveyed? And so I'm gonna go right up here to this equation. So the equation we're going to use is E equals Z times sigma of X bar. Now I'm going to draw a really quick picture of this. I'm 
might remember that when we just had 2.5% in here, this Z value was positive 1.96. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Sigma sub x is 3, and then I've got to divide that by the square root of n. Remember that sigma of x bar equals sigma sub x divided by the square root of n. I wanted an error of 1. There's a variety of ways of doing this, but you might... I don't know about the easiest way, but what I'm going to do first of all is multiply these two fractions over here. So I put it over one so that you'll remember that you multiply the top together and the bottom together. So 1.96 times 3 is 5.88. Now to facilitate cross multiplication, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to multiply this one by square root of n and that one by 5.88. Here's what I get. To solve this equation, you want to undo the square root. You undo a square root by squaring both sides. Now over here, you don't have to be very accurate at all. n has to be a whole number. And so what this is giving you is, this is the least n can possibly be for this thing to work out. So if I chose n equals 34, it wouldn't get the job done. It's just not good enough. So what I can do to make sure that the job is right, we round up to 35. And so that's the sample size as you want to achieve the error of plus or minus 1. So we, we could look at 3 plus or minus 1 inches contains 95% of the data.